Hello and welcome to the Big Battlefield 5 Tank Guide. In this video we're going to take a look at all of the tanks in Battlefield 5. I will be focusing on ranking those tanks and putting them in different categories. You got your heavy tanks, your medium tanks, your light tanks and so on. However, I will be giving a more detailed description of what you should actually be doing with the tank, how you should set it up and then the most effective loadout or loadouts for that specific tier. This video will be followed by another one that will give a more critical look at what makes the tanking experience in Battlefield 5 a little bit different from what we're used to in previous Battlefield games and then a bit of a talk about why I think DICE should change this for the next game and what they can do even with Battlefield 5 to make it slightly better. But for this video, let's focus on ranking the tanks in Battlefield 5 from best to worst. A big thanks goes out to KHT120 and Eros, both of which helped me with this video. As you can tell from the background with the footage, but also with writing the script, both have vast experience in the tanks in Battlefield 5, and whilst I have played pretty much all the tanks in Battlefield 5 extensively, I'm not quite at the level I think I need to be in order to give this advice. That's why I got these guys on board, because they're providing you with the best advice you can have for the game. I've also taken a look at a couple of different things online and on Reddit and a couple of other guides just to get myself in the best position to make this guide the go-to for anyone who wants to get good in tanks and get the best loadouts for the respective sides. Just to clarify, the way that we're going to be ranking these tanks will not be a straight best tank in the game to worst tank in the game because some of them are very situational and depending on how you set them up with specialisations it's really difficult to find a one tank fits all scenario. But what I will do throughout is give you the best specialisations for each tank and then depending whether you're on the Axis or the Allied side and what you actually want to be doing with the tank you can make up your own mind. There are obviously some very strong picks to go for such as the Panzer IV or the Archer, maybe even the Valentine Mark VIII. Or if you're after a smaller tank, you only have to pick between the Staghound and the Panzer 38T. So it really does come down to how you set up those specific tanks. You'll see that throughout this video though, as I'm very clear with the specializations and a few tactics you should use with those specific tanks. Let's start out with the heavy tank tier. Starting out with the Churchill Mark VII. The driver starts with a 75mm and a coaxial machine gun, but can upgrade to a 95mm howitzer. The gunners control a hull machine gun and an optional turret machine gun when you upgrade the tank. With high health and armour protection, the Churchill can tank quite a lot of damage, but it's also a big lumbering beast and is quite easy to hit. This is often the case with the heavy tanks. You have to position yourself in the right place because you can't nip from cover to cover. You're quite large and you're going to catch a lot of incoming fire. The most notable thing about the Churchill is its 95mm mortar, which has the best splash damage out of any non Sturm Tiger tank. Whilst the QF 3 pounder is versatile, the Valentine Mark VIII is superior to the Churchill in versatility. I would recommend left middle, left left. Again, that can be seen on screen now. Moving on, we have the Churchill gun carrier. You unlock the Churchill gun carrier at rank 17. The tank shares similar health, armour and mobility statistics as the regular Churchill, with the main difference being an armament layout change. The main gun, the QF3 Pounder, only has a limited traverse, meaning you have to rotate the entire tank to hit targets. As a summary, the left hand side of specializations will offer an enhanced survivability, whilst the right hand side produces a more powerful anti-tank option. The Churchill Gun Carrier is a suitable anti-armor tank, with the option of equipping AP rounds with a blistering 800 meters per second velocity, but the Valentine Archer is simply better at the tank sniping role than the gun carrier is. However, if I was using this tank, I would recommend right middle, right right. Specializations can be seen on screen right now. The third variant of the Churchill is the Crocodile. This is a flamethrowing variant of the Churchill Mark VII and can be called in by a squad leader for about 20,000 points. It functions in a similar way to the Churchill, but with a heavier 75mm round, a smoke screen, and a second seat flamethrower. If you are on the Axis side, 
and you're after a heavy tank, you will have to settle for the Tiger I. This is the best anti-armour tank for the Germans, as the Stug is terrible, but the Stug will come later on in a slightly different category. The heavy and slow Tiger is the premier Axis anti-armour vehicle. With high damage per shot and the option of a HEAT or APCR rounds, the Tiger is capable of two-shotting light tanks and laying waste to other tanks in general, assuming that you hit your shots and you've got a bit of accuracy on your side. A Fulbright specification path is recommended, which unfortunately eliminates the possibility of using the highest damage HEAT rounds. However, the APCR rounds do not lag far behind HEAT rounds in damage output and allows the user to avoid the pineapple wrench, which is detrimental to vehicle use in practice due to the high downtime required to use it. Despite its utility on other vehicles, the S-Mine launcher is actually not recommended with the Tiger 1 due to the impracticality of using the Tiger as an aggressive tank. The Tiger is best used as a long-range anti-tank sniper with the ability to frag as a bonus when it comes to taking out infantry. I would recommend a full right-hand side specialization tree that can be seen on screen now. Moving on to the medium tanks, we have the Panzer IV. It's the best anti-infantry tank in the game because of the same splash damage as the Tiger with the high rate of fire, the case shells, the spotting flares that cover an entire flag, and overall you're in a great position to take out lots of infantry. Whilst the Panzer IV isn't capable of the sheer carnage the Valentine Mark VIII can deliver, it does deserve the role of the most versatile tank in Battlefield V. The left tree specification path gives you the KWK-40. It's not the Pack 40 as the game states. Sometimes it can be a little confusing in the different menus when choosing your weapons. This will allow for a better anti-tank use whilst retaining the good anti-infantry capabilities of the tank. The right tree path turns the Panzer IV into an absolute infantry slaughtering terror. The default stubby cannon on the Panzer IV features the same blast radius and damage as the heavier Tiger I, with a higher rate of fire. Spotting flares allow one tank to reveal the location of everyone on a single objective, and case rounds allow the player to destroy anything the default HE rounds and coaxial MG34 cannot handle. I would recommend LLLX for versatility and RRRX against infantry. Both of these specialization trees can be seen on screen right now. The other option if you're on the allied side is the Valentine Mark VIII. This is a solid choice for all round gameplay. It will out DPS the Tiger because of the high damage with the six pounder and high rate of fire. A true anti-everything tank that excels at destroying everything but planes in the sky. With the base QF 2-pounder, it is one of the worst tanks in the game, which many people will have played with and been put off by it, which is fair enough, as you only deal light tank-like damage and you're incapable of one-shotting infantry. But once you upgrade to the QF 6-pounder, it should be feared by armour across the battlefield and infantry alike. Mine clearing charges allow you to ward off incoming assaults or play aggressively whilst AP rounds allow you to heavily out DPS even the Tiger 1 which is incredibly strong. I would recommend right middle right X. You can see a screenshot on screen of what I suggest with the specializations right now. The Staghound T17E1 is going to be treated as a light tank in this video, but in reality it is more of an armoured car. It is treated as the United Kingdom's light tank with the Germans having the Panzer 38T and is unlocked at rank 5. It's very quick, it's lightly armoured and has around as much health as a half track, but to be honest it doesn't matter because this thing is all about packing a punch and being up and mobile and all around the map as much as possible. 
The primary assets, as I just mentioned, are of course its small size and high speed. It's the fastest out of the armoured vehicles thanks to its wheel drive system as opposed to having tracks. However, you are going to get stuck in certain circumstances and some people who've used the Staghound will know that you do get stuck on maps such as Aerodrome if you try and jump off the side of these little rocky outcrops because it just doesn't have the tracks to get itself free and it reminds me of the LAV from Battlefield 4. You start out with a 37mm cannon and then can upgrade to a 20mm auto cannon. You get 30 rounds of ammunition and your secondary weapon will be an M1919 Browning with 500 rounds. Simply a better Panzer 38T in practice, its ability to assist nearby infantry with droppable supplies makes the Staghound appealing as a team support tank and its little John adapter along with the spotting scope allows it to play as a suitable anti-tank sniper, albeit with underwhelming damage per shot. You can be a bit of a nuisance with this tank against enemy tanks in general. The Tulip Rockets and the Coaxial Machine Gun are where the Staghound really shine though. The Staghound has the best Coaxial Machine Gun in the game as it has lower than average spread and by far the fastest velocity of any machine gun. The Tulip Rockets are solid on Conquest where the Staghound can flank larger vehicles and deliver an immediate high damage barrage. On Breakthrough, the Tulip Rockets still provide high utility against infantry targets, but have less utility against vehicles due to the higher difficulty of flanking vehicles in Breakthrough. As mentioned earlier, the German counterpart to the Staghound is the Panzer 38T. This is the best tank to push aggressively with in the game according to some, with great speed, low to medium armour, and it's preferably used on maps where there's not that much armor playing against you. If you are on a map where there's a lot of armor, the Panzer IV would be a better choice, and we'll get on to what's the best choice and ranking the tanks a little bit later, but that is worth noting if you're on the German side. The great thing about the Panzer 38T is that it fits everywhere, and it reminds me of the flanker tank in Battlefield 1. You can get through little alleyways on maps such as Rotterdam, you can sneak behind cover and get out of the way of incoming fire quite easily. There's also a nice feature on this tank for maps like Rotterdam, where you're surrounded by infantry, the S-Mine launcher is super effective. So in the more crowded, close range maps, you can go left, middle, left, left, and on the more open maps, you can go left, middle, right, then any. Now it used to be a lot better than it is today due to its ability to stack the 20mm autocannon and APCR rounds. The Panzer 38T though has received many needless nerfs like the Staghound and the AA tanks. While it's still a respectable anti-infantry tank and the autocannons are fun to use, the Panzer IV is still a better Axis anti-infantry tank due to its case rounds and incredible splash damage. That's not saying you cannot use the Panzer 38T. As you'll see from some gameplay in the background, the thing is very strong and it can really become a nuisance to the enemy team, especially making use of its speed and maneuverability. However, with these nerfs, the light tanks aren't as good as they used to be and maybe you'll be considering the Panzer IV as an option to offer something a little bit different to the Panzer 38T and still be very effective. Next up is the Flak Panzer IV, an anti-aircraft tank. Like the Valentine AA, the Flak Panzer's high rate of fire option is terrible against both infantry and planes, making it necessary to use the Flak 43 cannon to be slightly less terrible against planes at the cost of being more terrible against infantry. As you can tell, this has received some serious nerfs and isn't as effective as it used to be, which some people will prefer and think is better, but for those that actually like taking the AA tanks, you're going to be pretty annoyed. Also, in a similar fashion to the Valentine AA, the Flak Panzer isn't that good against infantry and planes anymore in any layout. If you are looking to take the Flak Panzer IV, I would recommend left, 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 left. The specializations are on screen for you to see now. Moving on to the Valentine AA Mark I, the anti-aircraft tank. Once a fantastic anti-infantry tank with respectable anti-air abilities, the Valentine AA is no longer any of these things. Like its German counterpart, the Flak Panzer, the Valentine AA has been repeatedly nerfed into a state of unfun. Use the Mark 8 for murdering infantry now, I would recommend 
left middle, left middle. The specialization tree, if you are really wanting to use the Valentine AA Mark I, is on screen now. The Valentine Archer, a tank destroyer. The absolute best anti-armor tank in the game, in my opinion. With a high rate of fire, especially when upgraded, and a heavy QF-17 pounder, it delivers unparalleled damage output against both tanks and infantry. Its main drawback, its fragile front-mounted engine, calls for use of maintenance drills, allowing the driver to quickly clear engine damage. The APDS rounds actually deal less damage to both infantry and armor, and should be avoided at all costs. In its place, you should take the spotting scope, which when combined with a good position allows you to spot any incoming enemies. The spotting scope also allows the user to compensate for a lack of a proper turret, as any incoming assaults can be accounted for whilst furthering the archer's already ridiculous anti-armor ability by allowing the user to track enemy tanks behind visual cover and continue delivering rounds on target. I personally would recommend right middle, right middle, and you can see the specializations on screen now. Next up is the Stug 4, the tank destroyer. It's simply a Panzer IV without a proper turret. Why does it exist? I don't really know. I should really take a look at making this thing more of a powerhouse if it's going to be one of these big slow lumbering beasts that can't turn fast and can't do a whole lot of damage. What is the point in it existing? As an alternative, I would just recommend using the Panzer IV. So that's it for this tank guide. I've tried to pack in as much as I can into around 15-20 minutes of video. There's a lot of information here. You can really narrow it down to just the specialization trees if you're looking to go back through the video and find the exact information you want. Some people might timestamp them down below, I'm not too sure, but if you do have a different opinion to me and Eros and KHT, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I'll check out some of the comments and obviously if you're looking for some tactics and strategies, people usually leave them down in the comments below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.